Greetings all, this is Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. We're back with another episode of our weekly show here on this channel called America's Greatest Personalities. If you've seen this series before, and if you haven't, where have you been? But if you have seen this series before, you will know that uh, we cover all kinds of great American personalities, ranging from Hollywood celebrities to Broadway performers to historical historical figures to great American artists as well. Up until this episode, we have covered two great American artists, the incredible Georgia O'Keeffe, and also in another episode, a lady by the name of Mary Cassatt, who went over to France during the time of the Impressionists and made a real name for herself over there and in the rest of the world, not easy to do in those days for a female and an artist. But today we're going to focus on a lady by the name of Louise Nevelson, a great American sculptor that practically nobody has ever heard of. By the way, if you haven't seen those previous artists episodes of this show. Do a search on this channel in YouTube for Georgia O'Keeffe. You'll bring up that episode. And also Mary Cassatt, and you will bring up that episode. But for now, let's get started on this episode dedicated to the incredible Louise Nevelson. Stay tuned. Let's begin with some things that the great Louise Nevelson was famous for saying. We usually start this way with these personalities in these episodes to just give you an idea of what they were really like, as if they were talking about themselves to you instead of me talking to you about them. So with that in mind, here are some things that Louise was famous for saying. She once said, life isn't one straight line. Most of us have to be transplanted like a tree before we blossom. Louise Nevelson also said, I think all great innovations are built on rejections. Louise also said, I believe that most artists create out of despair. The very nature of creation is not a performing glory on the outside. It's a painful, difficult search within. And finally, Louise once said, I never feel age. If you have creative work, you don't have age or time. Speaking of age, Louise Nevelson spent the first half of her life studying art and struggling for recognition. She was 40 years old before she had her first exhibit, and it wasn't until she was in her late 60s that her art actually supported her financially. That is dedication to one's passion. That is what the creative process is all about. But from there, she started to cement her standing as one of the most important American sculptors of the 20th century at 60 years of age. Her works can be found in almost every major museum in Europe and America. If you're a museum goer, no doubt you have seen at least one of her amazing works, but might not have known about the creator of those amazing works. Here's the bottom line on Louise Nevelson's art from a visual perspective. She was a sculptress who was heavily influenced by something called Cubism, African sculpture, and the artists by the name of Matisse and Picasso. Here's the key. She was best known for arranging boxes into entire sculptural walls from pieces of wood, cast metal, and found objects. She usually painted these boxes black, a color which she felt was the essence of the universe. Her look 
was almost as celebrated as her artwork was. She was very tall and thin, almost always wore a wrap or some sort of kerchief that covered her hair. She smoked long, thin cigars and always wore long, thick, fake eyelashes. Louise Nevelson was one of a kind. But there was so much more to her than just the facts that I presented to you thus far. She was born in Kiev, Russia in 1899. Her father was a contractor and a lumberyard merchant. In 1902, he decided to emigrate to the U.S. and left his family in Russia while he went to the USA. This was when Louise happened to only have been five years of age. She was very connected to her father, and as you can imagine, was extremely traumatized by his all but sudden departure that she really literally did not talk for no less than six months. But her father happened to send a lot of the money that he earned in the States back home. And in 1904, they sold their house in Russia and left for the USA so Louise could join her father. Louise has said the following about her childhood. In the first grade, I already knew the pattern of my life. From the first day in school until the day that I graduated on exams, everyone gave me a score of 100 plus in art. Well, where do you go in life? You go to the place where you get 100 plus. Louise shunned her special calling in life once the family came to the United States, though. In 1920, she went to New York City and eventually married Charles Nevelson and had a son by him. When the son was nine years old, Louise decided to resume her pursuit of art and went to Munich, Germany to study. Do you see the repeat pattern here? Not only that, Louise also decided that married life was not for her, so she decided to separate from her husband and brought her son to live with her parents during the time Louise went to Europe to study. She studied with world-famous teachers in Paris and Munich and returned to America to raise her son and pursue her art career. Louise had her first one-woman show in 1941 in New York City, but her really big break didn't come until 1957 when she began to show the world her box-like sculptures. By 1967, she was already well-known throughout the States and Europe, and her work received high acclaim everywhere it was displayed. Louise Nevelson wasn't only famous for her unique style of sculpture, her outspoken personality and fierce mode of self-expression also garnered her lots of notoriety and attention. Louise loved her parents. Her mother was free thinking and had strong socialist ties. Her father believed in equal rights for women at a time when most did not. Both of them, her parents, weren't afraid to let their thoughts and feelings be known whenever they chose. Like parents, like daughter. Here are some of the many things Louise has been proud to have been quoted as saying. First up was this, all my life I didn't feel that I belonged here. There was that great hunger, that great search. At one time, I thought maybe religion would do it. At one time, I thought philosophy would do it. At one time, I thought heroic things would do it. I didn't care where I could communicate with it as long as it somehow gave me measure, some measure of just contentment, of peace between the storms, you see. No one yet has fulfilled what I am searching for. Louise also said this, 
I think art is tough, and naturally an artist is sensitive and tough all at once. It's like a beautiful instrument that has the loudness and the softness to it. You can't be shouting all the time. You can't be whispering all the time. Man has that range. And I think that the more magnificent the range and the bigger the range, the more you get the extreme that there is where art would lie. You can probably see by those quotes that I've shared that this artist wasn't intimidated by much of anything and had definite views about everything. She also wasn't intimidated by new ideas and creativity in art either. Louise Nevelson continued to show her works and sell her works well into the 1970s and 1980s. She became proud of her son who decided to follow in his mother's footsteps and become a famous sculptor in his own right. In 1976, Louise wrote a best-selling autobiography that is called Dawns and Risks, in which she credited her own determination for her success. In honor of her success in life, the US government in the year 2000 issued a special Louise Nevelson commemorative stamp, five different varieties of them actually, each with a photo of one of her amazing sculptures. Louise Nevelson would leave us in New York City in 1988 at the age of 88 and certainly lived a full and vastly rewarding life. She was, still is, called the Empress of Modern Art. And one said, it's a hell of a thing to be born. And if you're born, you are at least entitled to your own self. Louise Nevelson knew exactly who she was, where she came from, and where she was going, and, suffice it to say, what she was truly capable of. And she wasn't afraid to show you through her magnificent work and tell you about herself either. She once said, I have made my world, and it is much better than I ever saw outside. That was the great Louise Nevelson. We certainly hope you enjoyed this episode of America's Greatest Personalities. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. Thanks for tuning in.